This video was brought to you today by A Class Kisses. Let the fun begin! Hello my beautiful bright stars! Today we are looking at number theory. But before we begin, I'd like to let you know, pressure can boost a pipe, but it also takes pressure to create a diamond. Every challenge is an opportunity for growth. If you dare to take it, you are a diamond in the making. Whatever your dream is, know that it's possible. We believe in you at A-Class Theatre. Do you believe in yourself? Place value versus face value. Let's look at an actual example. 23,562. Do you remember your place value? Let's go through it. The 2 is in the 1's position. This 6 is in our 10's position. A 5 is in our 100's position. The 3 is in our 1000's position. And the first 2 is in our 10's of 1000's position. Now all that I've called is based on place value. It's the place value of the number. Now do you see that the place value is based on the position of the number? Let's look at it. The place value of the last two is 1's, whereas the place value of our first two is 10's of thousands. So the place value of a number is based on its position, whereas the face value of both twos is simply 2. So the face value of the number is the actual value of the number. Pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah. Let's look at ascending order. Have you ever had to climb up a tall staircase? It can be a lot of work, can it? Yeah. Now ascending order is simply climbing from the bottom to the top. So you go from the smallest or the lowest to the largest or the highest. Let's look at an actual example. So we have 34, 65, 7, 90, and 3. Now if we are to put them in ascending order, we start with the smallest number, which will be 3. Then 7, 34, 65, and 90. Now they are in ascending order. Descending order. Descending order can be likened to riding down a stairwell with a bicycle, if you're that brave. It's simply going from your top to your bottom, or from the largest to the smallest. Let's look at an example. We have 1, 34, 65, 73, and 54. Now to place these numbers in descending order, you start with your largest number. In this case, our largest number is 73. Then we follow with 65. Then 54, 34, and finally 1. You did a pretty good job. Sequence of Numbers Patterns and sequences surround us everywhere. They are in the things that we see, eat, love, smell, and play with. They are all around us. They're even in the music that we listen to. Sequences make up our entire universe. They are all around us. So then, we need to know how to find sequences of numbers. Can you help me find the sequences of the following numbers? Help me finish the sequence. Let's take, for example, 13, 16, 19, 22. Now, the trick to filling a sequence out is simply looking at the first two numbers. Now, if you look at 13 and 16, how can you get from 13 to 16? If you said 3, that's correct. If you add 3 to 13, you get 16. Now, how about from 16 to 19? How can I get from 16 to 19? If you said 3, that is correct again. You are on a roll. Now, how can I get from 19 to 22? If you said 3, 
That is correct again. Now do you see that we have developed a pattern? It's simply add 3 to every number. So then how can I get from 22 to the next number? Yeah, I have to add 3. Good job. So then my new number is 25. And how can I get the next number in the sequence? I simply add a 3 again. So I'll get 28. There you go. Let's try another example. Isn't this fun? How about this one? We have 8, 9, 11, 14. Help me finish this sequence. How can I get from 8 to 9? Did you say 1? That is brilliant. How about from 9 to 11? Did you say 2? Oh, that is correct. How about from 11 to 14? Yeah, you are doing well. Yes, it is 3. Do you see that we're simply counting up? 1, 2, 3. So then what do you think we have to add to 14 to get the next number? Yep, you're right. We have to add 4. So 14 plus 4 gives us 18. That's correct. Now, how do we get the next number in the sequence? Yep, we have to add 5. So that number will be 23. Brilliant. Let's try one more. How about this one? We have 17, 15, 16, and 14. Can you help me finish this sequence? How can I get from 17 to 15? Did you say minus 2? That's correct. Pretty much that's it. I have to minus 2 to get from 17 to 15. How about from 15 to 16? Yep, I have to add 1. That's correct. How about from 16 to 14? Did you say minus 2 again? Yep, you are right. Do you see a pattern developing? I minus 2, then I add 1. I minus 2, then I... That's correct, I add 1. So then the next number in my sequence is going to be 14 plus 1, which is... 15. Very good. Now let's try the other one. The next number in this sequence, we'll find it by minusing 2. Beautiful. So, 15 minus 2 gives us 13. Give yourself a pat on the back. You did a good job. Now here we go to something that's even more fun. This is the highest common factor. Do you remember what a factor is? I am sure you do. Yes, let me just refresh your memory. A factor of a number is simply all those numbers that can go into that number without leaving a remainder. So let's look at the highest common factor of 36 and 42. Now there are two methods in which you can do this. Let's look at method 1. Now in method 1, you simply list the factors of 36. The factors of 36 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. Now let's list the factors of 42. The factors of 42 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 14, 21, and 42. Now the key word here is highest common factor. So let's look at all the factors that 36 and 42 have in common. They are 1, 2, 3, and 6. So the common factors of 36 and 42 are 1, 2, 3, and the 6. Now we are looking for the highest common factor. Now which is the highest common factor among these factors that we have listed? Yep, you are right. 6 is the highest common factor. So therefore, the 8th of 36 and 42 is 6. Let's look at method 2. Now method 2 uses prime numbers. Do you remember your prime numbers? Now a prime number is a number that has only two factors. That's correct. 1 and itself. Let's refresh your memory with our prime numbers. 
Our prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 29, and they can go on forever and ever and ever. Yep, you've heard me correct. These are our prime numbers. So this method, we use our prime numbers. Let's look at it. So we set up a box. Well, you can say in this case, half of a box. And we have 36 and 42. Now you always start with your lowest prime number and see whether that number can go into these numbers. If it can't, you move on to another one. So let's look, can we use two? Yes, we can, because two can go into 36 and 42. So we say two and 36, two into 42. Two can go into 36 18 times, two can go into 42 21 times. Now, can we use two again? Now the number that we select must be able to go into both numbers at the same time without the very name. And in this case, we cannot use 2 again because 2 cannot go into 21 without leaving a remainder. So let's look at the next prime number in the list. We can use 3. Can 3 go into 18 and 21 without leaving a remainder? That is correct. Yes, it can. So we can use 3. So therefore, we say 3 into 18 shall give us 6 and 3 into 21 gives us 7. Now, are there any more prime numbers that we can use to go into 6 and 7 without leaving a remainder? No. So therefore, our HCF of 36 and 42 can be found by simply multiplying the numbers that we used, 2 times 3. So the HCF of 36 and 42 is 6. Pretty simple stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I know you like it. Let's move on to another fun thing to do. We're looking at LCM. Let's find the LCM of 6 and 12. Now, the LCM is lowest common multiple. Do you remember what a multiple is? I am sure you do. Yes, a multiple is simply all those numbers that that number can go into without leaving a remainder. So let's look at method one. We list the multiples of six. The multiples of six are six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, and they go all the way to infinity. Let's look at the multiples of 12. The multiples of 12 include 12, 24, 36, 48, and they as well go all the way to infinity. Now, the key word here is common multiple. So what are the common multiples between 6 and 12? Let's look at it. We have 12, 24, 36, 48, and so on. So the common multiples between 6 and 12 are 12, 24, 36, 48, and so on. Meaning that we can have more multiples that they have in common. Now, let's look at the lowest common multiple. Now, which multiple is the lowest number that's common between 6 and 12? If you said 12, you are correct. Yes, 12 is our lowest common multiple. So therefore, the LCM of 6 and 12 is 12. Pretty simple stuff, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Let's use method 2 to find the LCM of 6 and 12. Now this method also uses prime numbers. So let's get our prime numbers back to the top of our screen. Oh yeah, we love prime numbers, don't we? Yeah, we do. Okay, so we have our prime numbers. Now, in this method, again we have our half of box. Now you start with the lowest prime number that you can possibly use. So we start with 2. So I say 2 can go into 6. How many times? If you said 3, that's correct. And 2 into 12 is 6. Now can we use 2 again? Sure we can. In this method, you're reducing every number to 1. So it doesn't have to be a number that can go into both numbers at the same time. So let's use 2 again because we can reduce to 6 to 1. So we get 2 into 6 is 3. Now 2 cannot go into 3, so the 3 remains exactly as it is. Now, 
what's the next prime number we can use to reduce to 1? You're correct if you said 3. So therefore, we put 3. So 3 into 3 gives us 1, and 3 into 3 gives us 1. So the LCM, lowest common multiple of 6 and 12, will simply be equal to the product of the numbers that we use. So it's going to be 2 times 2 times 3, which is equal to 12. Let's summarize all that we've learned. The place value of a number is based on its position. The face value of a number is the actual value of the number. It does not change with position. Ascending order. Ascending order is done when we list our numbers from smallest to largest. Descending order. Descending order is when we list our numbers from largest to smallest. Sequence of numbers. Sequence of numbers is simply the relationship that ties a group of numbers together. It's basically that rule that you can use to get from one number to the other. The highest common factor. The highest common factor between any two numbers is the largest number that can go into both numbers without leaving a remainder. The lowest common multiple. The lowest common multiple between two numbers is the smallest number that both numbers can go into without leaving a remainder. That's pretty much it guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'd just like to leave you with this quiet message. That dream that you have, it is possible. You have what it takes to achieve it. And all you need to do is just believe. Believe in yourself today. Because we believe in you. Thank you for spreading a glass to